Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to yet another unboxing video. Um, it's release day. Today we've released uh, Umbraco 816, and um, I hope you join me uh, for a couple of minutes running through the release, seeing what's, uh, what's what. Um, today I'm joined by Sebastian Jensen. As, uh, Hello. Hi, Sebastian. Um, Warren is out on vacation, much to serve it. Um, so uh, Sebastian has uh, volunteered to join um, yes. and uh, actually has a few demos for us. Uh, What's your overall thoughts about uh, 816? Yeah, um, solid, solid little uh, release with uh, uh, a lot of bug fixes and um, some performance issues uh, fixed uh, or improved, and uh, a lot of um, uh, dependencies added uh, or updated. And yeah, uh, yeah I'm, uh, I'm feeling good about it. Had some good feedback as well during the IC uh, period, so all good. Yeah, that's really cool. It's nice to see that. Uh, I think we're getting more and more feedback on. Uh, Absolutely. Really, really helps out in making even more solid releases. Um, yeah. So it's really great. And and also, uh, when you think of how many release candidates we've put out over the last <laughs> while, pretty cool yeah. to see that people are still uh, taking time to actually test them and give feedback. Totally. I think that's really nice. Um, but uh, what do you say? Should we just jump into it? Yeah, let's go for it. Right. So um, first feature that uh, is highlighted here in uh, Philip's release blog post is the ability to add a custom dashboard for user dialogues. Yeah, um, this is funny. This one uh, was, uh, was uh, uh, made by Lee Kelleher, and um, he uh, asked, is there any reason that this doesn't work? Uh, it's supposed <laughs> to work. The code is almost there. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> what do you want to do with it? And you have good <laughs> ideas, so let's uh, let's do it. Yeah, we, we, we're we're not actually even sure if it worked at some point and if something yeah. has moved or might have worked in V7. Yeah, but it, it works now and it's actually really neat. So I thought we could just uh, run through a little demo of uh, how it actually works. Um, so the user dialog is what you open when you click on your user profile in the uh, in the back office. And this is where you can actually inject the dashboard. It might sound a little weird as a dashboard is normally a full screen thing, but uh, that's, that's the way it works. And the great thing about this is that it lets you inject the HTML view and you can connect that to Angular and then you're pretty much up and running with whatever functionality you want to shove in there. And um, so I thought uh, we could just uh, do a quick demo of it Code editor up here. So I've uh, got uh, an installation of Ubuntu 16 running, and uh, it's running the starter kit. Uh, and in here, I'll just add a little folder. We'll call it test dashboard. Like that will add a view. So this is what we actually want to pop up in the um, on the uh, on the user dialog. And in the view, let's just do the good old hello world exclamation mark. So let's see if we can get that in. Um, we'll add a package manifest, just like you do when you're adding property editors or yeah. other custom dashboards and things like that. Thing in the A, yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, and it's really important to say that this is almost exactly the same as adding normal dashboards. So yeah, yeah, it's just a matter of, of the section you assign to it, uh, that's the only thing. So I'm just going to uh, assign this as a JSON file. Gives me a little bit of syntax highlighting, which is always nice. We'll add an object in here. And then a neat little trick is to add the schema store um, in here. So let's see. There, Thus, there's actually IntelliSense for package manifest. So if I write package dot manifest here, we'll actually get a little help once we start filling this out. So you can see now I can actually see what I can add in here. So we want to add a dashboard, and that is an object as well. In here, we'll give it an alias. We'll call it test dashboard. We'll give it the section that we're going to uh, add it to. So that is called user dialog. 
normally you would put uh, content or settings or uh, yeah, other yeah. sections. But yeah, yeah, and, and you, can, you can see it's, it's an array, so you can actually add multiple. So if, yeah. if you, for some reason, wanted it to show up on the content in the content section and on the user profile, yeah. that's totally cool. <laughs> sure. And then uh, the final piece of the puzzle is to add path to our view here. Call it test dashboard. View dot html. Oh yeah, sorry. The, the, the folder. The name, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And then view dot html. That looks good. I think. Okay. It works. I just bumped the web config. Old habit. Might not even be necessary. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably, probably not necessary. And let's just refresh. Ah, there we go. Can take a little while 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 streaming and recording yeah, at the same time. I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. So there we go. Amazing. <laughs> totally fantastic. <laughs> We've got HTML rendering on the user profile. And um, you'll note here that there's a, a weird uh, name in here in the brackets, and that's because you actually need to add a language file um, for translation purposes. So you add a lang folder as well, uh, XML file uh, for translation, and then offer that. And um, just to show a little bit more advanced functionality, I've uh, cheated a little bit, and I've actually used the um, dashboard, custom dashboard tutorial uh, that you can find in the documentation. So on the tutorials creating custom dashboard, Mark Goodson wrote this uh, fantastic uh, tutorial, uh, very, very in-depth that goes through all the steps of adding custom dashboard um, with controllers and, and styling it and all. Um, but I'll just copy that over here. So here you can see we've got a user dashboard that has a package manifest, a JS controller, and a view file as well. It's also got the translation file in here, so you shouldn't see the brackets. Let's just bump it again. And go back to the back office, refresh, and have a little nice wait, and then hopefully we should see uh, another custom dashboard added to our back office. Oh, that was great. Oh, there we are. Wow. So uh, this shows our recent work. What it does is it gets uh, the, um, the, the user logs, uh, which uh, actually holds what, uh, what the user has edited. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and then it just renders those out. It also has a button that lets you go and create a new blog post, which is pretty neat. Um, but as I said, you can find all of that in the documentation for creating a uh, custom dashboard. But uh, I think you can quickly switch to whatever you've been working on recently. Yeah, yeah. It it also links to each of the um, each of the nodes here. So if I want to go to the home node, which I edited a couple of days ago, apparently, uh, then uh, then we can have a look at that. So um, really neat and. Uh, Think pretty easy to get started with at least. Um, so uh, I think great, great functionality and a nice spot from me to actually get it in there. Yeah. I didn't even see any C sharp in there. No, uh, I didn't add any C sharp, but you totally can uh, add uh, endpoints which you call from your uh, from your Angular. You can uh, you can register dashboards via C sharp as well. Oh yeah. Don't want to use the package manifest, you can do it that way as well. So there's uh, plenty of options. Uh, that's also in the, uh, in the documentation. Good. Nice. What else do we have here? So the next one, that's you. So I'll just yep. stop sharing my screen here. So there was, um, we have, um, I can share. So this one is also kind of a little improvement, but quite nice. It adds yeah. a checkered background to the file upload on transparent images and SVGs, I think. Yeah, so if you um, uh, go back, if we go back to an, uh, an older version of Umbraco mm -hmm. and add uh, an image here, that's, um, 
conveniently called white dot.svg. <laughs> you can you can imagine what's in it. Even even Windows doesn't get the preview correctly here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also we do it here. So there's a you can see that there's a dot here, but over here it doesn't look like there's any files. Uh, and that's uh, a little bit annoying, especially if you're trying to actually edit uh, something in, your, <laughs> in the media section here. Um, <laughs> and in H16, um, uh, Piano makes sure that we actually uh, show the correct preview. So we can actually see that there's a file to be edited here. So you have a nice checkered background. That's really nice. Super nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, Super helpful, especially one of those... with, with, with white dots. But it yeah. just makes sense in general <laughs> that you can see exactly. that. Actually... Yeah, well, a lot of uh, logos and stuff is uh, probably a, a white foreground and a transparent background. So uh, yeah. you, uh, I think people have uh, probably run into it before. Mm -hmm. So it's a very sweet little, uh, little fix. And uh, the other thing that um, also added by uh, by Bjarne, um, been busy. he's been busy. <laughs> I think uh, what seventeen pull requests in this uh, in this release. Yeah, that's uh, pretty amazing. <laughs> uh, if we have a look at the tables, um, still uh, very useful for if you have tabular data. Um, uh, over here in the, um, the table designer, we have uh, some properties we can set on them. And uh, one of these things is uh, to uh, be able to set a color to a um, uh, one of those X things which I can never remember. Uh, and that's the whole point of this new feature where uh, Bianca realized we, we already have a nice color picker in, mm -hmm. built into Embraco. So why not let's, uh, let's apply the color picker to, um, to the which text editor, table editor as well. Yeah. As you can see, we have now the most beautiful table with the most beautiful color scheme ever. Are you a designer, Sebastian? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And uh, again, a great spot to see that uh, this stuff was actually uh, sort of sort of missing. Like the, the yeah. color picker is already there, so why not? Uh, why yeah, exactly. Instead of having to type in codes or color names or whatever you had to do before. So Bjarne is especially good at is like uh, getting rid of those little annoying things. Uh, yeah, definitely. And, and I think we've also mentioned, yeah. Uh, That's more Bjarne about, here. <laughs> more more Bjarne. Uh, he's over the last, I think, three or four releases now. Um, he's been uh, kind of extending the work. Mike Mace started on making SVG icons fully available in the back office. And he's been just trolling through. Uh, all functionality in the back of this, everywhere where an icon could show, he's uh, uh, he's updated that to support these uh, SVG icon custom SVG icons. So that's it's really really nice, uh, and it's of course uh, accessible as well. Um, the new component that has been created for these icons, so it's uh, really really great functionality. High five, you rock, Bjarne. Definitely. And <laughs> um, so. That's uh, that's all the fe features we've kind of highlighted. There's there's actually a ton more in the um, in the release. Uh, you see, there's 59 issues and improvements added here. Everything ranging from more accessibility improvements to updated dependencies, um, developer experience improvements. Um, there's actually one uh, added by Callum White. Um, that's kind of neat, where he makes the uh, if you're using the Umbraco mapper, it's now more discoverable uh, via IntelliSense. Mm. Um, so you can actually see what type constraints you can, uh, you can choose uh, in there. Um, cool. Whereas before you had to go or go and research <laughs> what what uh, what you had to add. Now you can sure. just add a dot and it'll, uh, it'll show up. Uh, it'll show up. Very nice. Really, really nice. Um, but as I mentioned, a couple of uh, updated dependencies. I don't know. I don't think there's anything particular to. Uh, no, we had we had a few problems with um, 815 where we added something called message pack and uh, that had extra dependencies that for some people uh, didn't work. So we fixed those um, and we have uh, updated uh, image processor to the latest version. Um, last uh, version, maybe. James is uh, the last version probably. <laughs> James is not working on uh, image processor actively anymore. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, now we have all the latest versions of that available as well uh, out of the yeah. box, so you don't have to manually upgrade anymore. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, he's shifted completely over to Image Sharp now for yep. .NET Core. Yep. Um, just like we'll do very soon for Umbraco 9. In Umbraco 9, yeah. Yep. Um, then we have a, a new thing here. Uh, there were so many changes from the uh, release candidate to the uh, public release, which got available now. And 
that we actually thought it, it, it might make sense to call it out. Uh, I mentioned we've had quite a lot of uh, feedback on it. So, yeah. of course, um, these things have been addressed. But I think you've added a couple of other things as well, right? Yeah, I sneaked in a few uh, few extra performance uh, updates, uh, but we have we had some good feedback uh, on on the people testing the RC, where some things didn't work as expected uh, anymore. Uh, so um, that's uh, that's uh, part of this list is fixing those things. Uh, yeah. And then we have uh, so the the first and the last item here is um, uh, Chad uh, fixed a memory leak in one of our dependencies. So we updated that dependency, and um, and he uh, he added some. Uh, more uh, proper disposing of some uh, some objects that uh, could be disposed easily, so that they don't stay around the memory. So. Yeah, yeah, really nice. So there's actually some some uh, performance improvements in this release as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think uh, Shannon also added uh, kind of a big one that covers a lot of the caching layer, right? Yeah, there's a lot exactly. of uh, more deeper stuff yeah. that hopefully people should Quite. notice, but it should be better <laughs> and faster. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, it's yeah. quite low level um, what he's uh, what he's touched there, and um, uh, it, looks, uh, it looks like a really good improvement there as well. Yeah. Very cool. Solid release, I think. Yes. Um, pretty much a no-brainer to update to. Uh, not Absolutely. too many big things, but a lot of nice little improvements. And yeah. um, I thought it's also mentioned in the intro: seventy-five percent of the additions here have actually been added by uh, our community. Yeah. It's been active again, which makes yep. me happy, of course. <laughs> so we've seen, uh, yeah, oh. I mean, uh, there's uh, behind uh, 17 pull requests. Uh, Chad is still working on uh, on uh, performance updates, which uh, all of the small little ones add up to uh, to big, big uh, updates uh, uh, in general, of course. Uh, Yen has helped out a little bit. I see, um, uh, I don't know their actual name, but Inetso here is returning. Um, they were mentioned uh, the first time in the previous uh, version 8.15 uh, with their first pull request. And yeah. now uh, uh, apparently um, uh, got the uh, the hang of it and uh, is uh, happy to help out more. Yeah, yeah. So, it's the same with uh, Patrick. It's not it's not yeah. too many releases ago. Uh, he made his first he pull was, request. Uh, did his first, yeah, exactly. Just fantastic to see that people are nice. keeping the steam up. Um, it's a bit of okay. those. Exactly. Yep, and then we have a few new ones. So we have Jamie and Robert, uh, Hank Yum, uh, sounds like a Dutchie. Hello, Dutchie. <laughs> uh, uh, Michelle and Philippe and Kevin uh, doing their first pull request for any any Embraco uh, project. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. high, five, high five you rock on that. Fun to see these names. Some, some of them I've seen around for a long time before, uh, and it's fun to see them now uh, uh, do their first contributions. And yeah, hopefully yeah. more coming. Definitely. It's really great to see. Um, right, and so of course, yes, we have more trees. We uh, um, are expanding our forest, our worldwide forest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, we've uh, talked a bit about this in the unboxing videos before, but it, but you were actually mm. the one uh, that uh, kind of spearheaded this. Uh, oh, yeah, at least from, from the HQ side of things. So mm. Give us a little sort of explanation on what's going on with the trees. Sure, yeah. So, we started, uh, we, we joined Hacktoberfest every year. Uh, and um, uh, like like the official Hacktoberfest, we uh, we also uh, have been giving people T-shirts for their for their pull request efforts. Um, but this year, um, Digital Ocean offered to plant trees instead of uh, making um, wasteful T-shirts for people. So uh, yeah. you had the choice of uh, getting trees planted in your name or uh, receiving uh, receiving your swag. And uh, we joined on that, um, and we. Uh, I've uh, been looking for a good platform for this for a while, and um, uh, Callum White actually found um, uh, this ecology platform uh, that he'd been using for over a year already uh, mm -hmm. to do uh, tree planting. Um, uh, so we started uh, looking into it, and it looked really good. They have an API, so we can do uh, do some things automatically. That's uh, that's for future use, uh, but for now, uh, we wanted to see. How we could reward uh, uh, contribution, code contributions uh, better, and uh, how, how better than uh, by uh, offsetting some CO two, planting some more trees in the world. Yeah, 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 I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah, and um, we so we actually do this. Anyone can go and add to the Umbraco forest. So if, oh, yeah, they can to, donate trees to our forest. Yeah, yeah, and uh, quite a few people have actually done <laughs> so already. Uh, but we also add for each release. Um, we add a, a number of trees. So if we go to the plot here, the later one that's been added is for 
Baco 816. Yeah, so and that's then, for, uh, for all the contributors to 816. There was 19 contributors and we can plant them 25 at a time. So basically what we need is 51 contributors to, uh, to, to add uh, two, two uh, times 25 tools. <laughs> cool. Well, we'll, I hope we'll get that next time. Yeah. <laughs> really nice to see. Uh, so, but, but it's pretty, pretty cool to see. Uh, the amount yeah, of been, uh, uh, offsetting we're doing, but also just the amount of trees. It's almost 3,000 trees. Now. Yeah. So, and then uh, to um, explain for Oktoberfest, we actually committed to uh, planting uh, whatever number of trees it was, I can't remember, um, uh, each each month. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're actually doing that for, for a whole year. So, your Oktoberfest contribution counts for the whole year. And every month we add, uh, automatically add more trees. To that. Uh, yeah. And then for each release, we add uh, uh, trees for the for the number of contributors to work. Fantastic! Such a great initiative, and a welcome yeah. for getting it uh, get, getting it up and running. Yeah, and we have more crazy ideas. It's got an API, so we can do so good, yeah, yeah, cool yeah, stuff yeah. with it. <laughs> Automatically planting trees, I think, is yeah. an <laughs> interesting concept. <laughs> yeah, I know that the Callum, uh, when they, when uh, people pay their invoices on time, he automatically plants more trees. It's a great idea. <laughs> Good incentive. Yep. Cool. Um, well, I think that's it for the release specific stuff. Uh, as always, there's a little guide to uh, how you can actually get your hands on Braco 816. You can, of course, download it from our uh, or NuGet uh, if you're into that sort of thing. If you're on yeah, Braco Cloud. Maybe, maybe good to note that we fixed the NuGet upgrade issues uh, that we had yeah. in the RC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of an annoying one. It, it meant you could not get up. Right, pretty much. Yeah, you had to do some manual upgrades first of other uh, other uh, packages. So yeah, yeah. fix that. Pesky typos. Should work now. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only other thing to mention is that, of course, Bug 16 is running on Bug Cloud, so all new projects will be running 816. And you should uh, on on older projects, you should see the little minor upgrade button, so you can upgrade to it uh, automatically as well and get all the, the new and great stuff. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, uh, I think that's pretty much it. Any last words? Enjoy 816. <laughs> Definitely. It's the uh, best version yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, just speaking briefly on the next release. So, uh, good point. My 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 thorough calculations uh, me takes me to around 817. I think will be the next one, right? That would be correct. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we're actually doing things a li little bit differently uh, with that yes. one, right? We have um, tabs are coming back to Embraco, and uh, it's a much much wanted feature. Yeah. Um, so we're bringing bringing those back, and we want uh, to uh, people to test a little bit longer than uh, than uh, usually, uh, so we can uh, iron out all of the, the little creases that might still be there. Uh, so we're releasing an 817 RC on September 9th, which is two weeks uh, before we would normally have done that. Yeah. Um, so that we can uh, get some uh, some more testing done on that. Yeah, yeah, and and that goes of course for 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 new projects, but especially also upgrading your existing projects mm -hmm. and trying to yeah. move stuff over to start using tabs. Yeah. And things like that. It also lets us uh, work on. Um, both fixing stuff if anything is found, but but uh, adding it to Braco 9 as well. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, what we're planning on is yeah. actually having tabs ready for launch there. Right? So, yeah, so yeah, we need to uh, we, we still need to merge uh, some things up to V9, uh, yeah. but uh, that's uh, that should be uh, in sync uh, very soon as well. So, yeah, yeah, so that that'll probably be an RC3 for Braco yeah. 9, I think, with tabs. Exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we also, since we have a little bit more time, if uh, a lot of things need to be fixed, uh, I think we might even do a second RC for eight seven. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, yeah. There's a, the, the, it's quite a a, a big uh, feature to uh, introduce. There's uh, things like uh, packages uh, could use tabs, and um, uh, what happens when indeed when you upgrade, uh, you shouldn't see anything yeah. different except yeah, yeah. Uh, when you actually start adding tabs yourself, and maybe some document type configurations are not as we expect them to be. So uh, we're hoping to see as uh, a lot of people try that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, but as I said, it's been going really good so far. More and more people yeah. are testing, and we really hope that people will be uh, so excited about uh, tabs that they'll uh, give 817 a go and, and help us. Uh, a lot of people very excited by the idea of tabs coming back. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely. And understandable, I would say. Mm -hmm. 
definitely. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, thank you very much, Sebastian, Sweet. for helping out. Thank and you. Uh, see you around. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.